My name is Seth Baum. I'm the president of the American Society for Preventive Cardiology, and I'm a cardiologist. Today, I'm talking about the debate, which will be uh, going on tomorrow at the Epidemiology Prevention Council meeting in Portland, Oregon. Uh, I have the privilege of debating another Seth, Seth Martin, and the debate topic is, is personalized medicine and population medicine compatible in the United States? And uh, I am taking the no position, which of course is very difficult uh, in a group of uh, epidemiologists. However, that is the position I'm taking and I, and I will stick with it. So the first thing I would say is that, of course, uh, they are compatible. Uh, there's no question that population-based medicine and personalized medicine can be compatible, but that's in theory, not in reality. So we have to really break this down. And we have to look at, first of all, population-based medicine, and then personalized medicine, and then look at them in the context of our own nation with our relative strengths and weaknesses. So population-based medicine really is something that utilizes uh, large patient groups, uh, such as in RCTs, uh, meta-analyses. Um, they inform our guidelines, and our guidelines are meant to inform personal decision-making among clinicians uh, in doctor's offices and in other clinicians' offices. Uh, these personal and individual decisions actually really are being extrapolated from population data and there are flaws in that construct to begin with. Um, so those flaws are really based upon a couple of things. One is the heterogeneity of treatment effects that is prevalent in all of these RCTs. And the other is the fact that there is really a disconnect between uh, clinical care and, or access rather, to clinical care uh, and results uh, in terms of outcomes. So that's been looked at in Europe, in England in particular, where um, over decades, in, uh, frankly, uh, people have seen that even though patients have had full access to, to healthcare, uh, there still remains an enormous and predictable societal difference uh, among outcomes. And so it's not just access, it's not just clinical care that's important, it's actually something much deeper and much more costly, which is restructuring our societies. Uh, and so I'm gonna leave this out of the debate because it's far too complex. What I would say is, let's take a few examples in clinical practice and see how that influences our ability to determine whether or not these two are compatible. So if we use guidelines, for example, we can see that um, by plugging in different patient characteristics, one can come up with some absolutely ridiculous scenarios uh, wherein, for example, if somebody is hypertensive and uh, uh, the hypertension raises someone's 10-year risk, you might treat that person with a statin, whereas a per that person should be treated with an antihypertensive therapy. So that's, that would be personalized medicine. You can make the argument that uh, there's always a caveat in our guidelines that you need to have a clinician-patient conversation, but the unfortunate fact is that most clinicians in the United States are, are too uh, time-strapped and, and don't have the time to actually have those discussions. So they go one of two directions. Either they follow the guidelines to a T, as though they're the Ten Commandments, in which case there would be an error in that, in that particular case I mentioned, or they completely ignore the guidelines, which is not a good thing, but they would have treated that patient properly. Ultimately, uh, what I will do tomorrow, and I won't do right now, is present a case of uh, personalized medicine, truly personalized medicine, of a clinician who I saw in practice uh, who came to me for cardiovascular disease prevention, and I had what I call an interventional prevention approach utilizing biological markers um, and utilizing imaging to actually um, risk reclassify him, even though it fell outside the guidelines. So in sum, I would say that Yes, these are compatible, but in reality, they're absolutely not compatible in the United States until we have enough money and enough uh, energy and direction to actually make the changes that we need in our society and in our healthcare system.